Welcome to the Well-Rounded Warrior, and thanks for watching. Um, in my opinion, being a well-rounded warrior means uh, a lot of different things, and one of those is knowing how to fix things. So uh, if you're a, a low-buck baller like me and you drive an old truck, well, at some point you're going to have to work on it or you're going to have to pay somebody to work on it. Well, being well-rounded people as that we are, we're going to go ahead and fix it ourselves. So uh, there's two things I need to do today. I need to uh, replace a door hinge uh, pin and bushing set, and I also need to put uh, two new hubs on the front of it. So uh, we're going to show you how to do that, and hopefully you'll, uh, you'll gain some knowledge from that. All right, just to show you what we got going on here, here's the upper door hinge on, in this case, a 1994 Chevrolet Blazer. So uh, what we got here is you have a bushing here that you can't really see uh, in the video. You have a bushing here, and then you have a bushing here. Uh, go ahead and lift up on the door, Jake. Harder. Harder. All right, so there's a lot of slop in there because there's a bronze bushing that's worn out. Uh, what you'll also notice too, um, this roller here is in pretty bad shape. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that too. Uh, here's the thing about the roller and the bushings. So you'll see here, if I can get my screwdriver to it, here, this is the pin that is the hinge pin, right? So what you need to do is you need to take this spring out to get that pin out to replace the bushings. Well, that's no big deal because we're going to be releasing the tension on this arm to replace this roller. So uh, the first things that we need to do is we need to get rid of that roller. We need to get that roller pin out right here. This is the roller pin. Okay. And to do that, we need to chisel off the top uh, because they have smashed it in place so it won't come out. Uh, our replacement roller and pin has a C-clip on it so we won't have to do the smashing. But what we will need to do is take a long chisel in such a manner and chisel the top of that off and we'll get to that right now. All right, now is where we're going to take our hammer and chisel and knock the top off of that roller pin. All right, it didn't take that much effort, but it took enough. Uh, it helps with a big hammer, and especially you're going to need a chisel at least this long. It almost wasn't long enough. All right, we need to drive that pin out. So uh, we're gonna take a lady finger with extended reach because I don't have a, a, a punch long enough and a regular old ball peen hammer and we're gonna knock it out. All right, so we have knocked it all the way out and that's not exactly what I wanted to do, but it'll work. And this is what we're left with. So uh, it's bent and the roller doesn't move very easily and there's a bushing into the roller and it is worn out. Looks to be, yeah, well that explains it because it's plastic. Our new roller has a plastic bushing also. So hopefully this one lasts a little bit longer than the last one. Also at this point you can compare and you want to you want to make sure that what you're replacing your uh, old part with is the same, and they are a little bit different, but they are uh, essentially the same. So, all right. So this is what you're going to be left with. You have the the roller pin out of the way. This arm is all the way extended, and you're going to be able to wiggle this spring out of the way. It'll come out, and now that the spring is out of your way, you'll be able to get that pin out. All right, now to get that pin out, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna take a screwdriver, we're going to pry this up, and essentially the pin will just drop free. All right, to give you a little bit of an idea of what we're working with here, here's our new pin. Uh, it's just a piece of steel. Then you've got these bronze bushings. Uh, you'll see they have a lip on them. Um, they go to the outside of the hinge or they're supposed to. So uh, 
All right, next step is, um, let me set those down. We're going to take our big flathead screwdriver and we're gonna pry up on this right here on the original. And we're just gonna pry this off. And uh, if we have to, we'll go ahead and drive that pin out. Uh, in my experience, it usually just about falls out. Retainer has come off, and we'll go ahead and knock it out. All right, there's our pin. Luckily enough for us, the pin doesn't appear to be worn out. It is bent, though, uh, so that tells me this door has been um, over over opened and overextended a time or two. Um, so the no wear on the pin means that there's more than likely no steel on steel, which means it hasn't ruined our hinge yet. Uh, but you'll see in just a second when I get the bushings out that uh, they are broken and cracked and worn out. All right, we've gotten the top bushing out. So you can see it's broken. I, I did break it a little bit, uh, getting it out. Uh, but the, uh, the top of it, right here is worn out from where the hinge is riding on it and then it is just worn out we'll get to the bottom one now all right we got it fished out all right it's uh is a little broken and it's wore out um we're gonna go ahead and get the new ones in there and we're gonna try and get them in there the way we took them out so that means they are going to sit in there just like this. All right, I think the easiest way to, to get this in here is going to be to take a pair of vice grips and uh, press it down till we can get it actually in the hole, and then we will use our punch to punch it the rest of the way down. All right, Jake, grab the door over here. Pull down just a little bit like I was. There you go, right there. Got a good start on it now. We'll use our punch to drive it the rest of the way home. All right, we've seated it all the way. So now, go ahead and get the next one in. All right, Jake, I need you over here again. Uh, shouldn't have to do too much. We've got our new pin and bushing in, and you'll see the door shuts like a drain, just like it's supposed to. Uh, there's not a lot of play in it. Actually, there's not any play in it. Shuts good, the body lines line up, we're good to go. The next step is gonna be putting the roller in, and uh, there's a little trick to that. Uh, we're gonna pry the spring over. They make a spring compressor for this, uh, but you know, it costs money, and. Yeah, money costs time, we ain't got it. So, we're going to uh, get that spring shoved in there, pressed over to the side, and then we're gonna go ahead and drive this thing up in there. All right, now that we've beat the ever-loving fuck out of that pin, we've got, it, uh, we've got it up in there. But what we still don't have, what I wasn't able to do, wasn't able to get this spring in there at the time. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish up, we're gonna put this clip on there, and then we're gonna find a way to compress this spring and then we're gonna shove it up in there and probably whack it with a chisel. So, wish me luck. All right, it ain't pretty, but it'll work. All right, so now what we need to do is compress this spring and figure out how the hell to get it back up in there. All 
All right, now that we have pried the fuck out of that spring and got her up in there, we uh, put a little grease on the, the pivot point there. And you'll see, it makes noise, but it shuts really nice. You'll see that the shuts really nice. Now it makes noise. I'll make noise right there. That's just the arm that's wore out. So now that that stage is done, we'll go ahead and we'll move on to the wheel bearings in the front. All right, we've taken a little break, gotten out of the heat. Now we're gonna do the hubs. This is pretty simple. I don't run center caps on my truck because I don't have the right lug nuts. So you're gonna need a 7 8 or a 22 uh, millimeter socket and then you're gonna need a 35 millimeter socket for the CV shaft um, before you jack the truck up go ahead and bust loose the uh, 35 millimeter and the 7 8 all right all right now that we have jacked the vehicle up and supported it with a jack stand correctly you can see why we are replacing it in addition to some kind of weird tire wear that sucker is wore out and now lug nuts are loose but most of that slop is in the hub so uh, it's not an uncommon thing um, this isn't the worst that I've seen but it is pretty bad go ahead no pick it up there you go sit it on the ground look watch look grab grab it with one hand and you'll spin. No, stop. Stop. What? Come on. Okay. Grab it. Put it on there. It doesn't go right on. It doesn't go right on. So grab the socket. Spin it. Okay. Let go. Grab here. Go. All right. Got it? Yep. Think you can get the tire off? Here. I'll show you how to grab it. What you want to do? I know how to. Grab it here. And back here, because it's a big tire. It's heavy. Hold on, hold on. You gotta get it off the studs. There you go, there you go. Pull it out. Oh, it's heavy, isn't it? Got it. There you go. Alright. So now we got a seat. Now we got something to sit on. Alright, so now we need to take the caliper off. And those should be 3 8 Allen heads back here. Take the caliper off, put it on top, and then we'll uh, just pull the rotor off, and then we can uh, finish this, and there's three 15 millimeter bolts, and then that hub will be off. All right, so a thing you got to account for is the splines and the CV shaft getting stuck to the splines in the hub. So... Uh, in our case, they're free, and we don't have to beat the crap out of the CV shaft to get it out. So uh, if they were, um, if the splines were rusted to the hub, uh, what you would need to do is take a brass, dri a brass drift, uh, get this nut off, but you take a brass drift, and you would whack it on the end, uh, on the threads here, um, and it would bust it loose. All right, so now we've got our 3 8 Allen head. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull those caliper bolts out. Damn, that was a good one. Hmm? See, that was a good one, it was stuck. All right, set the caliper up here. And uh, we'll see what it got stuck on. There's a, uh, these are aftermarket rotors. Uh, and the rotor surface wasn't wide enough. There's a step down right here, and the brake pad got hung on that because it's it didn't wear. Uh, that's tolerance stacking, I guess, in the manufacturing process. All right, so now we see how loose our hub really is. It is pretty, pretty sloppy. In fact, 
You can even see where the tone ring is on the CV shaft uh, for the ABS. He's actually been rubbing the uh, ABS sensor. So now is where we take our 15 millimeter socket, put it on our breaker bar. There's a hole cut in the hub. Oh man, these are for chrome sockets. All right, our black impact socket was too big. Happens sometimes. So uh, we got a chrome 15 and a breaker bar. And she a little rusty. All right, now we've got the last bolt out. We're gonna go ahead and whack this thing with a hammer and get it separated from the knuckle. Out she comes. All right, so apparently something got really hot because it's blued back here. All the grease has come out of it. It's super sloppy. No more seal. It's it's, not there yeah. Yep, it got really hot. So now we're going to, I'll probably knock the studs out of this and save it. But uh, save the studs. But that's garbage. The new one's about to go in, but first we gotta clean this up. Before I do that, I need to be able to see what I'm doing, so we're gonna go grab some lights real quick. Okay. All right, must have got it clean enough and lubed up enough because it slid right in. Seriously? Jesus. Is that even a fucking problem? Well, we're ball joint shit too. <laughs> this thing was totally whacked. Please stand that up. All right, because the hub was so sloppy, I couldn't see that we have another problem. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it here. That's in a lower ball joint. So lower ball joint is uh, toast on this thing too. And we'll, uh, we'll do a video on that sometime in the very near future because this thing needs tires. And I'm not gonna put tires on it with, uh, with it having problems. So we'll do that. Anyways, the next step is to just finish up uh, putting those next three bolts on. And because I'm here, we'll go ahead and throw that nut on there. And then it'll all go back together in exact reverse order. All right, so now that we know the job's only half done and our truck's totally fucked, we're gonna go ahead and put it back together because we don't have the parts to finish it. So this is the time where we put that rotor back on. Oh, but it flops around. It flops around, it's going to be a real bitch to put the caliper back on. Pro tip, use a lug nut and just run it on to keep the rotor from moving. It might seem like something small, but you know, there's going to be that first timer mechanic that's going to see this video and it's going to change his life. So, what? let me just slide this back on. Might have to beat it on because of the damn brake pad. Really don't want to. Yeah, got to beat the shit out of it. All right, we're in, more or less. I'll go ahead and take our three eighths, run our caliper bolts back in, and we'll complete this. All right, since we're already in here and this video isn't long enough, we're gonna go ahead and put uh, soy bar end links on this side. Uh, the other side is actually already broken, uh, which is why we're doing this. So uh, it's pretty simple. 
you just have a really long bolt with some spacers and basically you have some uh, rubber and it isolates the sway bar and it connects it to the lower control arm and uh, we're just going to go ahead and replace that. So the first thing we need to do on this one, they have a, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, just a cover, I don't know why, but they have a cover there so we'll pop it loose, try not to totally destroy it. There we go, they're free. Yeah, it's a little plastic cover. Probably not going back. <clears throat> More weight, you know. Uh, all right, so looks like we got a 14 millimeter on the top here. Get freed up loose a little bit. All right, friends and knuckleheads, it's a new day. And uh, I couldn't stand to half-ass this. So I went and got a new lower ball joint. All right, so the plan is take this nut loose. Well, I take the cotter pin out of it. Take the nut loose, not all the way off of. Whack the spindle with a hammer. That should separate the spindle from the ball joint and the lower control arm. And then uh, we'll have to get it out of the lower control arm because it's sandwiched in there. Those are four bolts and hopefully it goes easy. I've seen these be a real pain in the dick. So uh, we'll find out. And also before I go too much further, um, last night I tried to do the sway bar end links, um, but because of where the, uh, let me get you up here, how long the bolt is and in relation to the upper control arm, I couldn't get, the, I can't get the bolt out without weight on it. And I want to put it together with a uh, fucked up lower ball joint. So we're going to put the ball joint in it and put the tire back on it. And then hopefully we'll be able to do our, uh, our sway bar end links here. All right, just before we get rained on, uh, what we've done is we uh, took the cotter pin out of the lower ball joint, took the castle nut loose, but not all the way loose, uh, beat on the spindle a little bit, beat on the ball joint, and we've got it broke loose. But because the ball joint uh, faces down, what we've got to do is jack the lower control arm up to get it free from the spindle, which is what we're going to do right now. Was not bullshitting you when I said it was going to rain? All right, what we're working with here in a nutshell, had to jack the lower control arm up, take the bolts out, slide, slide the ball joint out, and then up out of the spindle. So you saw the slop, what we were working with. I, I have to have two hands. It's totally fucked. Like, yeah, that's that's not good. So we got the new one. Uh, huh. Come in, uh, new one. We'll get it stuffed in there and uh, basically the reverse. Slide it in the in the spindle and then back in the control arm. All right, going back together. So what we've got. We have got the new ball joint. We slid it down into the spindle first and then back into the lower control arm. This is a balancing act because while I did unbolt the CV shaft, I didn't take it all the way out because the sway bar end link is in the way. And it's kind of a balancing act to get, to get the uh, ball joint back in the control arm, but you also have to slide the CV shaft back in the hub at the same time uh, wasn't terribly difficult but it's something you have to think about all right so we're about ready to put the tire back on we got the cv shaft back in got it bolted up inside there got these bolts tight here uh, you can see on the cv shaft how the hub was worn and it was hitting the a, uh, ABS sensor. So, all right, next step is we're gonna let Jake put the tire on and see what happens.
Good. All right. We'll uh, hit it with a breaker bar and torque wrench when we get it off jack stand. Here, I got it. All right, so here's the broken uh, sway bar end link on the driver's side. Uh, I ended up having to cut uh, here to break it loose from the rest of the bolt. What happens is there's a bolt and there's this sleeve. Uh, the sleeve rusts to the bolt, then the sleeve won't come off the bolt. That's a lot of surface area inside there. So we end up cutting it up here uh, just to get the sleeve out of the way. And then usually, uh, in this case, uh, the washer was rusted to the bolt, so you had to beat the hell out of that. And then that'll come off and then it'll finally come apart. Um, it did the exact same thing on the other side. Uh, you can't really tell, but the driver's side was already an aftermarket piece. Passenger side looks to be a factory piece. Um, but same thing, cut it, got it separated from the, the, the bolt, and then beat the bolt out. Just like, just like that. All right, guys, my uh, camera died while I was taking apart uh, or finishing putting together the passenger side, so you'll just have to imagine with me. This is what I was greeted with when I took apart the driver's side. This is the side that was not making noise. The tire was about to fall off. Um, I got the bolts out, uh, took the hub out, and then uh, set it on the ground, picked the hub up to try and move it, and that's what happened it fell apart that's bad that's really bad all right so that's the hub uh hub's back on the truck now uh i'll show you the sway bar end links and what i had to do so the passenger side uh that went right in no problems uh the bolt did not hit the upper control arm because the Sway bar is actually shifted to the passenger side. The driver side, the bolt did hit the upper control arm. So what I had to do is kind of mock it up, pry this here into position, and then pry between the upper control arm and the top of the sway bar to get the bolt down into the sleeve here. Uh, I could have used a ratchet strap to try and pull it over, uh, but I didn't need to. I just used a pry bar. Um, and then tighten it up. You also see on this side, as bad as the driver's side hub was, it was not rubbing the ABS tone ring uh, on the CV shaft. And it wasn't hardly making noise. It would only make noise when you would load it. It would barely squeak. Um, this side was making a god-awful growling noise and was uh, rubbing the, the tone ring on the ABS sensor. So now it's all put back together. We're going to make, uh, make a little test drive and make sure it stays together. All right, I'll leave you with some parting thoughts. <clears throat> so now that everything's back together and the sway bar end links aren't broke and the hubs aren't totally fucking shot, uh, truck drives a million times better. It drives so much better, in fact, that the brakes work better. Well, why would worn out hubs affect the brakes? See, what happens is, when that tire starts flopping around, it's not just flopping the hub, it's flopping everything that's attached to it, like the brake rotor. The brake caliper does not move because it's attached to the spindle. And so when that rotor hub tire flops around, what it does is it pushes the piston and the brake caliper back. And so there's added take up when you press the brake pedal because the fluid has to flow back into the caliper. So now that there's not all that added take up and the rotors are relatively new, they're not warped or anything, um, the brakes work better. It's kind of weird, but that's just one of those things. All right, guys. Well, I hope you learned a little something today. Uh, thanks to my, my son, Jake, for helping me out. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, watching YouTube videos uh, on how to fix cars is something that, that he's uh, been doing lately and I'm glad that I could finally make one with him. Um, just remember, when avoidance, deterrence, and de-escalation fail, high rate of fire usually doesn't. Thanks guys.